Welcome back. We are starting up our second episode of the Soul Pitch Podcast. And this week we are going to answer Lane's question about, hey, I'm not a salesperson. What am I supposed to do with this now that I get somebody come in to talk to me? How am I supposed to start the sale? How am I supposed to do something with that, right? But before we get too far into that, last time, Lane, we had a, a, a an assignment for yes, you. Yes, I'm, you I'm dreading this. Go. Yeah, I'm dreading I'm, this. I am sure you are because you, you were so hesitant last time. You just refused to give us a good 30 second commercial. So, but now we're back. We've been waiting anxiously for however long it took. And, Too long. Uh, I had to sleep on it. Yes, yes, you did. So let's see what you or hear what you had to come up with for your 30 second commercial. So give us a background real quick. What's your, what are you selling real quick? What are we doing? All right, so I'm, we're, uh, we're doing websites, um, you know, all the PHP, JavaScript, HTML stuff, all that kind of good, good stuff, all SEO, stuff I have you no name idea it. idea what it is. Yeah, okay. Alphabet Soup. Alphabet Soup. So uh, you just called me and um, we're talking for a minute. I go, okay, listen, give me a, give me a quick, uh, what do you do? All right, Rob. Well, uh, we, broadly, we, we work on websites. Um, you know, many of my customers come to me frustrated because their website is broken. Uh, or it's just not converting as well as they expect. Uh, sometimes they're worried because their site is very slow or, or angry because they feel they've been ripped off by a previous service provider. You know, honestly, sometimes others are confused because they just don't know what they need. Um, I don't know if that resonates with you. Yeah. You know what? I got ripped off last time I did my website. They, they took $10,000 and never got anything out of it. Oh, man. That's terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. So how would you go from there? That's a good question, right? That, that, that's a good question because I think you're, you're dealing with a trust issue at that point. And so if, if I, I feel like if I immediately jumped into trying to convince them that I'm not going to rip them off, I don't know that I'm really building any trust there. Can I make uh, one suggestion? Sure. Never convince anyone that you're the best. Let them tell you. Let them convince you that they're ready to talk. If they're not, they'll say, no, I don't need to. And they'll feel comfortable telling you that because you're not pushing them. But if you stay, if you will, in a position where they are going to tell you, no, 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 I need to talk about it now, then you now have the ability to say, hmm, tell me a little bit more. Why do you think that? And you start to ask these questions and it becomes a conversation. And it's all the questions that you need to be asking that are all related to whatever their issue is. And the key thing to remember too, when you're talking about these, um, the issues that they're having and, and you found one thing, don't believe that that's the only problem or the biggest problem. I hate to say that, but a lot of times somebody will give you the problem and you think that's their problem, but there's actually two or three other problems and one of them is really big. And that's the real problem they're trying to solve or fix. And until you ask some more questions and in that conversation, you might say something and they might say, you know what, that's, that's another thing we're having a problem with. And you might go, well, tell me more about that. And you start to find out more. So there's a whole series of questions. So that's kind of how I would do it after your commercial. If they start opening up, that's your opportunity to start to dig for some more question with some more questions, but that's not why we're here now, right? We're here to. No, that's not figure out why you're not a salesperson. I, I, that, that's it. I'm not a salesman. So who told you you're not a salesperson? I've told myself that. Oh, okay. Well, there's uh, we talked about that last time, right? The, uh, the number one reason that somebody can't make a sales, usually their own, their own problem. And, and nine times out of 10, actually probably 9.9 .9 times out of 10, it's the salesperson's fault. In my opinion, uh, anytime I've, anytime I've blown a deal, it's because I've blown the deal and I did something wrong and I didn't ask the right question. I did something wrong. So, but if you think you're not a salesperson, you'll never get the sale. So you must've just quit now, right? Well, but that's why we're here. So you can, you can, oh, okay. con, you, so you can convince me that, uh, yes. that I really am a salesperson yes. or I can be a salesperson. So there's another question that I should ask. Is this a technical issue or a mental issue or is it both? No, I think it's totally mental. Yeah. It, I would, I would agree. There's probably some technical things in there that you could probably improve maybe that you don't know, but I would say almost all of it's mental and having the ability to think, all right, this is not me that's causing this problem in terms of what this issue is. Sometimes it's a, it's a conversation that you've had that didn't go right. And it's not because of anything you did. It's just because that potential, the prospect took you down a road that didn't make any sense. And they just played games with you and you didn't realize it until it was too late. And you finally decided that's enough. So 
there's one option and the other option yeah. could be, you know, you said the wrong thing and, and never got to any further than that. So, um, so what stops you then from being a good salesperson? Do you think? Um, a big part of it is I don't, I guess I don't feel that I know how to sell. Okay. Um, so I guess maybe that, that really comes back to your technical question. Yep. Um, so, you know, I don't have the, the, the technical knowledge or the know-how uh, to, to make the sale. And, and two, you know, I've, I've always been work, I've always worked in a, in a technical industry. You got the, you got the geeks and you got the sales pre, salespeople and uh, they're a different you know, bunch. They're a different bunch. Um, you know, earlier you mentioned, maybe it was uh, last episode, you, you kind of mentioned the, 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 the type of salesperson. You know, you got, you got the, the kind of the slimy leisure suit Larry kind of guy. And, and uh, th- honestly, that's a lot of the sales salesmen that have, have that work in tech or like that. So. so here's a question for you then you brought that up and maybe I'm wrong, but when, when somebody says, when you, when you say I'm not a salesperson, is that really what you're saying is I'm not that kind of person because I don't want to be that kind of person. I think that's part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and when you, when you hear people say, what's a salesperson, do you think like the used car sales guy, you know? Like, oh yeah, totally. Man? Totally. All right. So that's, that's part of it too, right? And that's totally how I view you too. Oh, good. Oh, well, at least you're not wrong there. So, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I don't really consider myself a salesperson either because of the same reason. I, I find myself asking more questions than probably a lot of people, but it's because I don't, I'm, number one, I'm curious about what's going on and what the issue is. And if I can help, I want to help, but I also don't want to be a salesperson like the used car salesperson. Like, I don't right. Know, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's horrible. And, and some people just like that. And they, that they think that's the way it's supposed to be. So if you're saying, Hey, I'm not a salesperson, is that also feeding into maybe that's part of the reason why you feel like you don't want to be known as a salesperson and that you don't want to be in sales because you got to figure think, out how to do that. Yes. Yeah. I think it's, it's that, that mental perception of that's what a salesperson is. So I don't want to be like that. And, but two, um, you know, the, the, the technical aspect of it, of, I just don't know, you know, what to do to make that sale. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about what are good characteristics of a very good salesperson. What do you feel like is somebody that's really good at sales? What are some of the, like, who is a good salesperson? Do you have a description of what you would describe as really good? I, I think for me, that's a little bit of a difficult question because of just the nature of how my personality, how I go about buying. It's probably a little different than, than a lot of people's, but you know, I like to go read and educate myself about something and, and understand what it is. And I guess I think that's how I convince myself to, that oh, yeah, this is what I want to buy. Yep. Um, and I actually get irritated when someone comes in and tries to, you know, play that, that sales role. I'm like, no, no, leave me alone. Just let me, let me do my thing here. Yeah. And, and um, that's part of the reason why salespeople are annoying, right? Yeah. It's like you're not, they're not letting you do what you're supposed to do to get the sale. And that is annoying. So, so what are good characteristics of a good salesperson then for you? So for, for me, it's kind of stay out of my way, but at the same time, if I have a question, be available that I can ask that question and I can get a straight answer without all the, the fluff and, and nonsense. So if somebody stayed out of your way and answered your questions when you had questions that were needing clarification, what does that lead you to? What does that make you do if you're the buyer? For me, it allows me to be comfortable with the, the product or solution and you know, I know, I, I, I guess there's, there's co- some confidence there that I'm going to get the support I need when I need it. It's that, that, that comfort of, I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe it really. It's just, um, it's a trust issue, right? Yeah, it, it yeah. is. It's a trust issue. Yeah. yeah. So, and then other people don't, don't buy that way. Right. Uh, what do you see other people do? How do you see them buying? Like how, uh, somebody that's different than you, how do they buy? Oh gosh. Um, hmm. Think of, well, think of other people that are significant to you, how you watch them make buy and pick a purchase. What is their criteria to make a purchase? What do they need to do? Well, I, I think a lot of times they're, hmm, that's interesting. It, it kind of got my wheel spinning here a little bit to. Uh, are they faster at making decisions or, or just as, you know, or slower? Are they the same? I, well, I think some, some people are faster and some people are slower. You're making you're making some of these little these little little connections here because now I'm starting to see things that I didn't really see before. Where um, I can see where other people really need that that emotional connection to go. go oh yes, I that's this is you've you've given me what I've what I've 
what I'm looking for, that validation or, or you've made me comfortable with the product or, or this or that. And, and when I'm talking to people, I, I tend to approach it from how, how I would want to be handled, not necessarily seeing how that other person may, may not um, have the same needs that I do. Yep. That is so. a huge breakthrough. Most people don't even get that because they, they think that what they're doing is using the sales tools that are available to them, their techniques, whatever they've learned, and they sell. And in reality, really good salespeople figure out what tool that person needs to make their decision. And by that person, I mean the buyer, what that buyer needs to use from a tool standpoint to make their decisions. And so if I'm selling to somebody like you, or if I'm selling to somebody who's opposite of you, there's a different way to sell. I personally like one particular style, but I can work with either, right? Right. Because right. somebody that's fast at making decisions, I have to slow them down. Somebody that's slow at making decisions, I have to wait them out. So thinking about you know being a good salesperson or not isn't so much about being this person that is has these characteristics of being a salesperson. It's about fitting into what it is that the buyer needs. And it sounds almost like being a chameleon, but it's not. It's giving them the tools, letting them make their decisions based on the conversations you guys are having and making it so that they're comfortable making their decision at some point. And that's the hard part. People don't understand that if you start to push people to make a sale, if I push you, somebody like you, not necessarily you, but if I push somebody like you who wants to be analytical to make a sale, to make a decision, and you're not ready, there's no way in the world you're going to let me buy, get you by, right? You're going to nope. tell me, get lost. And you'll, out of spite, go somewhere else. You name or, you got Or go the next day, back to the same place, look at the same salesperson and go, hey, I'm back. I want to talk to this person over here because I don't want to talk to you. And I'm going to buy it from them just out of spite because you know what? You wasted my time. I'm wasting yours. Yeah, you, you know me well. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, those are, those are the characteristics to me is whether or not somebody's good at sales. It's literally taking your brain and thinking of yourself as I'm somebody else besides who I am. I have to think not in terms of what I need. It's I need to think in terms of what the person who's buying needs. And so when you think about what a good salesperson is, if you really, 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 really think about what is a good salesperson, who comes to mind or when did you make a purchase that when you bought, you walked away thinking, I, I, I didn't, that guy didn't, that person, that woman, that guy didn't sell me. I, I, they helped me make, make them a buy because I was very comfortable making that buy. I didn't even have to think about it. Did you ever, have you ever had that? Not that comes to mind, honestly. Okay. So it doesn't happen very often. I've had it. Uh, once where not too long ago, anyway, where I went to buy something. I think we were buying our car is where we were. And, and there's two kinds of situations. So let me back up here. The, what comes to mind is two things. One, I went to buy the car that we own now, one of the cars we own now. And it was an experience unlike no other. They, they sat and they listened. They asked a lot of questions. They wanted to make sure we got what we needed What's the purpose of buying this car? Why are we doing this? Is this what you want to do? You know, those types of questions. And they were really good about answering questions and being patient. And we went through the process. We walked away going, we got a pretty good deal. We're happy. We may or may not have gotten a good deal. I have no idea. You know, you, you, you don't know. But You felt you did though. It felt like we did. Recently, we went back to the dealership because they had this special going on where like the interest for the payment was going to be less than half than what we got before because of the times of, you know, COVID and everything else. Right. So while they're going through this, to bring the, all the interest rates come down. So we go, does this make sense for us to basically buy another car and essentially get, a, get another car refinance essentially, right. By getting a new car. And right, it's right. probably crazy, but does, can we make the numbers work? We walked in with the attitude of, I don't think we can make the numbers work, but we might be able to make the numbers work. We sat down, salesperson came over, starts talking to us, suddenly the manager's over here and he's asking all these questions that are irrelevant or telling us things about this vehicle. Well, I can get you in this one and this one has these features and here's the reason why you should buy this one because, and all these things, and I'm like, I, uh, it means nothing. I just want to know if I can get a better interest rate and if I can make right. the numbers work. Show me that the numbers work. And I was pretty clear. Show me that the numbers work. Didn't listen. He was just went back on to, but this one has a safety package and this one has, I'm like a safety package. I already know it's safe. I already own one of these things. I just want to get another one. That's all. And he wouldn't listen. And we walked out and we said, well, no, we're not doing this. So that's the difference to me. Same dealership, different people, 
one was a good at listening. They walk through the process, obviously a different manager on, on shift because right. I mean, literally that guy was like the, the woman who was selling us did a good job of getting all the data and information from us and making sure that we could answer those questions. And she worked us through a few things, but then when the manager came out, he did the same thing and solidified our decision. So you have to think in terms of how do I make sure that I'm listening to that potential customer and what they need. And by the way, you, you have to do the same thing when they're a customer too, right? You can't just tell them everything and talk to, it's like they're already a customer. So don't treat them like they're not a customer yet. So what sticks out of that? Anything that stick out to any of that stuff that, you know, not necessarily my story because stories sometimes are, you know, boring and sometimes they're good. I don't know. <laughs> but but, but, but if, if, if you think about all the stuff we just talked through, what sticks out as something that you can hang on to and, and use later? It's, it's definitely paying attention to the, the, I guess, the communication style uh, preference of the other person, which I, I think we'll need to talk about that as well at some point of how, to, how do you recognize that? That is on the list. You got it. All right. All right. And then the other thing that I also should mention is, is that sometimes when you're in this process, it's difficult to say certain things and it's difficult to ask a question. Sometimes it's hard. I mean, I had to ask a question one time where somebody said, Hey, if I, I can't do this price, but I can do it at this price. And it was like a thousand dollars less than what I was selling it for. And I'm like, I, I knew in my brain, I couldn't do that. And right. all it, all it takes is like five seconds for somebody to read for me to read that person and, and hear what they're asking me for real and ask a question back. And that is, again, five seconds of just saying, let's pretend I can do that. What happens? Nine times out of 10, the person goes, I was just curious. Hmm. And they don't even need the $5,000 off, right? And yeah. then every once in a while, there's somebody that, well, then I can't buy. And I say, well, okay, what should we do? Because at that point, I can't do anything and I'm not gonna change my price. Yeah. And like I said, that's throwing it back in their court to either say, well, I guess we're done talking or all right, I, I can come up or, exactly. or or something. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happens. They have to make the decision as to whether or not we're done or not, because if I cut it off, they're going to be mad, mad at me. What are you doing? You're walking away from me. Although I am subtly doing that. I'm, you right. know, I don't know what to do for that. Um, there's a good book, by the way, called um, Never Split the Difference. Right. If you've ever heard of that book, that's a great book to buy. That's it's about other things, but it actually applies in sales a lot. And it, it applies in that case where somebody has to have some guts to stand up and say, no, I'm not going to lower my price. And we'll talk about that another time. But so does this help you become a better salesperson? That's the other question. Is this a good starting step? I think that's a, it's definitely a good, good starting step because it, it helps me understand, you know, kind of where, where I am and, and, and how I've approached things in the past and how I should probably change to uh, approach things in the future. Okay. All right, cool. And I think next episode, we are going to talk about creating this sales funnel, if you will. And I don't mean necessarily the website funnel. I mean like a funnel of different ways businesses can come in, uh, business can come in, how you're going to get your customers, how the, what does that look like? How do you do it? And what are the steps that you need to take to, to get that funnel set up? So hopefully you've learned something this week or this time. And, um, and then next time we'll talk about that. Um, do we need to give you a homework assignment lane this time or, or did we keep you up too late last time? Oh, I lost a couple of nights of sleep last I figured, time. I, I figured you would have. I figured you would have. I know that's the kind of person you are because you want to make sure you don't look bad in front of everybody, which I appreciate because I don't want to either. Right. So, all right. All right. Some of so, us have to work harder than others, but I know. Yeah. That, no, trust me. I work really hard. So, all right. So until <laughs> next time, we appreciate you guys uh, listening. And if you have any questions that you want to send in, please do so on the website and we will see you next time. Happy selling. Bye. Bye.